Live from San Juan, Puerto Rico, it's theCUBE, covering Blockchain Unbound. Brought to you by Blockchain Industries. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's exclusive coverage in Puerto Rico for Blockchain Unbound. I'm John Furrier, your host, here covering all the action in Puerto Rico as the global society and industry come together. Our next guest is Marshall Taplitz, who's the Chief Strategy Officer and Co-Founder of Ninja, nynja.biz. Check out their site, nynja.biz. Marshall, thanks for joining me. Thank you. So talk about what you guys do. You guys are doing some disruptive stuff. Tell us about what you guys do, then we'll jam into a conversation. Sure, so uh, are you familiar with uh, WeChat in China, for example? Yep. Okay, yep. great. So I mean, I've personally been living in China 15 years, so we've watched kind of the birth of the Chinese internet, which as we know is a little different than the, the regular inter internet. A lot of mobile users. A lot of mobile <laughs> users. 800 million China mobile subscribers alone. Okay, and uh, WeChat basically is a, a, a platform that started off as just a messenger, but basically what it's done is it's integrated into every facet of Chinese society. Um, to give you an example, uh, you go to a restaurant, you scan a QR code, the menu comes up, you, pay for the, you pick the food, you pay for the food, it comes, you walk out. Yeah. Everything like that is in China. Uh, everything like that is in WeChat in China. So what we've done is we've kind of taken this concept and we're working on a global version of it that's cryptocurrency based and we are working specifically with uh, Chinese companies in order to help them go global as part of the China One Belt, One Road program and working with companies like uh, Alibaba, what have you, uh, in order to help Chinese companies go overseas and uh, take what they've built in China but operate globally with cryptocurrency. Are you guys in China or, because it's been hard for companies to start companies in China. So you're living in China or you're yeah, working so in China? So because we live in Shenzhen, uh, right next to it is Hong Kong. Hong Kong is where our company is based. Uh, yep. Hong Kong, uh, as you know, a previous British colony, the, the legal system and the financial so you're system. So you domicile in Hong Kong, that's where you're based? Uh, me personally in Shenzhen, the but the company is in Hong Kong. Yes, yes. and we also have a Wyoming corporation Shenzhen's in the US. Shenzhen's where all the action is. That's, that's right. where WeChat is. That's right. Alibaba's got Alipay, and then there's more business to business um, with their app. Um, so I get that WeChat's been highly successful. In fact, we have a huge following on WeChat, SiliconANGLE and Wikibon, it's free content, but um, that brings up the question of, Chinese kind of shown the way with mobile expansion. So their, their users are heavily mobile savvy. That's right. Okay, this is pretty obvious when you think about it, but in America and around the world, that's going to translate to the new user experience. So in, in your opinion, how would you describe the expectations that users have? Because you're living on the front end of the wave of what mobile's doing. I mean, there's a lot of gamification going on, so it's kind of creepy, but sure. what is your view of the expectations that users have and what's different about what's currently available in the web stack and the 20 year old e-commerce stacks that are out sure. there. Well, I think the most important thing is reducing friction, right? Um, you don't want to be using platforms where you cannot do it wherever you are, whenever you are. Uh, you don't want to have to go through payment processes. You don't have to re-authenticate your, yourself yeah. across whatever platforms you use and uh, you know, the. Uh, Interestingly, when I first went to China, it was all about you know, copying what was in the West over to there, but actually it's kind of the opposite now, right? So we basically want to take this concept of a frictionless you know, digital life uh, and make it a global opportunity, and especially with blockchain and cryptocurrency, you have that really as an opportunity because if you look at all the apps that are out there and the platforms that are out there, the only ones that have gone past a billion users, you know, WhatsApp, Instagram, whatever, are the free ones. Yeah. But as soon as you layer in payment, it becomes very locked. And you know, as big as WeChat is, and as big as Line is, but ultimately it's locked into the RMB system or you know, in Korea, what have you. So the cryptocurrency is really the first opportunity that the world's had to create platforms that can get up to a billion, two billion, three billion users that are able to pay. And, uh, and we just think that's a, a once in a lifetime opportunity and we want to be part of it. So I got to ask you about the um, impact that cloud computing has had on this. Um, obviously we've seen cloud computing destroy the data center model, allow people to get time to value faster, mobile on top, big data analytics, using data, all this stuff's awesome stuff. So the question is, is that that's kind of a horizontally disruptive view. Sure. So these stacks that are built old way where I got to own the stack end to end, yeah, there's some standardization in the lower end of the stack, but now you're thinking about more of a horizontal. I got jurisdictions, I got regions, I got countries, you got sovereignty. All these things are in the melting pot of the cryptocurrency, blockchain, sure. decentralized applications are major impacts to all those things. 
how do you see that playing out? Because that's kind of what developers worry about. Oh shit, will this work on that chain? Exactly. I got Neo, I got this, I got that. I mean, so the plumbing is totally a moving train right now. That's right. But the business models are pretty obvious. So there's like a business ops thing going on, what DevOps did for cloud. Exactly. You've got this new abstraction thing going on with this world. What's your view on that? Do you agree or what's your yeah, take? Yeah, I mean, well, you pretty much nailed it. I mean, basically what, what's happening is uh, over the last 10 or 15 years, you know, people have finally accepted that having your own server is kind of silly, you know, and most people now will just spin up whatever they need in terms yeah. of resources on the cloud. Um, but over the last couple of years, you know, you're really going more toward edge cloud, where you know the way the, the the clouds work is that basically it's pushing to get the least amount of latency, you know, and and, and store the data at, at you know as close to the user as possible. And then there's also regulatory in some countries now in terms of you know if your users are from this country, you have to legally store the data in, the, in this area. So yeah. so this is all kind of evolving. And if you look at the blockchain technology, I think it's it's the the, the payment version of that. So for example, you know, everyone's always concerned about getting in and out of uh, you know fiat currency yeah. uh, and uh, you know how am I going to get back to dollars and this and that but I think what's going to wind up happening is this is going to get pushed toward the edges and you know there will be opportunities and ways with exchanges what have you to get in and out but more importantly it's going to be like uh, just other currencies so for example I live in China but I come to the US a few times a year I also travel to Europe I have some dollars I have some euros I have some renminbi when I leave China, I don't immediately sell every one of my renminbi. I just I just keep it because at some point I'm going to need it, right? And, back, I, yeah. and I and I think what's going to happen in the in the cryptocurrency space is especially on the larger blockchains like you know Ethereum and Neo, what have you, is uh, people are just going to get used to keeping some of it, and uh, they're going to stop worrying about what the exact exchange rate is and how am I going to get in and out and this and that, and they're just going to you know start treating it as as part of their their currency stack, you know that, that they yeah, keep. Yeah, as long as there's some level of stability, it's just like you know I remember when I was growing up, there was no euro. Every country had their own currency, right? You had the French franc, the Swiss franc, the Deutsche Mark, Lear, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's right. But you're seeing that the viability of the money aspect. That's right. Because at the end of the day, there's two things that we've identified. Uh, and, uh, and analysis, and I was talking about it last night, talked about this morning on theCUBE, is the killer apps for blockchain, cryptocurrency, decentralized apps is two things, money and marketplaces. That's right. Everything else is just kind of circling well, around those two Well, there's more, but, but certainly that's the main part of it. Money, yeah. moving around. So yep. the uh, UK just announced with Coinbase, the Financial Conduct Authority, reading the news uh, yesterday, has essentially said, we're going to allow for the fast payment system to convert to fiat. It's a government, the UK is a, it's a nation. Yep. This is the beginning, to your point, that if they don't get up to speed, the edge of the network will democratize them and kind of circle the wagons, if you will. So That's right. it's already happening. Yeah, and I think what, what governments are starting to realize is, hey guys, this is just a technology, and uh, not only do you don't really have jurisdiction to control it, but also that you don't even have the technical means. So, you know, Wyoming is a, is a good example of, of uh, regulation coming into place that just kind of accepts the presence that this now exists, right? Yeah. And they're not going to try to make it something, you know, and fit it into to the, the old way. So, you know, and in terms of uh, the stability of, of these coins, I think it is important because people want stability, but in in other ways, if you don't look at the exchange rate, it's actually way more stable than the current system. And I'll give you an yeah. example. Um, you know, in the last uh, month or two, you know, the prices of cryptocurrencies have dropped almost like 40%. Now, you know, if, if the stock markets and the global FX markets drop 40%, you'd have blood in the streets. But the crypto market is, is asset-based instead of debt-based. And because it's so structurally sound, it's able to uh, handle these wild swings without actually collapsing the system. So in many ways, it's way more stable. And then as the market caps and the buy-in of these currencies yeah. get you know, bigger and bigger, of course it's going to be more stable over well, time. Well, I mean, it's stable from a fail standpoint, but a lot of emotional instability. Well, <laughs> People but, losing uh, money for the first time. But that's just because they're, they're speculating, speculation. right? There's they're speculating, speculating, and then if yeah. they're down, they feel like they lost, you know, but that's but, life. I mean, you people know? that are in the game, like you, we're long on, the, we're long on this. So what would you explain to someone because I, I have two, a, a lot of friends that have two schools of thought. That's a total scam, don't associate with that, to, oh my God, that's the next biggest wave, let's get our surfboards out there, and let's get on this. Sure. There's a multiple set coming in, it's the biggest thing we've seen. Sure. And everything <laughs> in between. How do you explain it to people you know, it's, for the it's, first time? It's just your traditional curve of, you know, there's early adopters and, and, and what have you, and you know, if, if you were 
if you were one of the guys buying up domain names in, in the early 90s, you know, some people would say, I can't believe you're spending $100,000 buying up domain names, but you know, some of them now are worth you know, yeah. tens of millions of dollars. So, but, but again, but again this, is, you know, this is the speculatory piece of it, yeah. and there's no shortage of opportunities for speculation, and I encourage yeah. everybody to speculate a little bit, because what it does is it gets you a yeah. taste of the technology. And usually when you have some money on the line, you pay more attention. So if, if speculation is what gets people interested, and it gets them watching it and understanding yeah. the technology, and using it, then I'm all for it. But people shouldn't be speculating with money they don't have. Uh, th anything could happen in the short term. Yeah. You know, nobody knows what's going to happen with any specific currency. But in terms of the technology itself, this is a revolution way bigger than the internet itself. This is where you're getting not only communications like the internet, but finance and governance and, and, and all as one. Programmable money, programmable contracts. It wipes out finance. It wipes out legal. It wipes out governance in many ways. So this is a huge evolution yeah. in human society. And uh, we've termed this open unity actually. And so we're, um, we believe that society has to reach a state of open unity in order to go into the singularity as we yeah. would envision it wanting to be, as something that's under our control. Yeah, and I think one of the things, first of all, that's a, that's a great statement, well said. I'll just kind of put some reality on that, connect the dots, is that if you look at the trajectory of cloud computing, Amazon Web Services was laughed at years ago. Um, EC2, S3 came out, compute, storage, building basic building blocks, it is a little more services. What cloud did for software developers and what they've disrupted from a business standpoint, Absolutely. DevOps, is proven. Absolutely. That, and what open source has done, even going back to the old Red Hat days and Linux, as a, now a tier one global citizen in software, you look at those two trends, you can connect that dots to what you just said. That's right. And what made cloud great was they made application developers have access to programmable infrastructure. Exactly. You're talking about a whole nother level of software programmability. Money, marketplaces, society. You're, yeah, I mean, you hit it on We're the head. there, right? That's exactly right. So, so when a programmer wants to start a business, instead of going to create an LLC and getting their EA, EIN tax ID or whatever, <laughs> and you know, when they want to go into Europe and dealing with that and, the, you know, and then trying to open a bank account, which is almost impossible internationally now, instead of that, you just have your <laughs> SDKs and your APIs, whatever, and you've got access to money, program yeah. at it, you can take money, you can move money around globally, frictionless, permissionless, yeah. uh, with well, governance, they, they smart contracts. They might contract. not even an SDK, it's dashboard. Exactly. It's a console, exactly. click, 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 smart contracts, exactly. governance, turnkey. And one of the things we're working on with Ninja in particular is this kind of on-demand marketplace and putting together yeah. decentralized teams for work, yeah. and this is all driven by smart contracts. So, you know, one of, the, one of the issues with the economy is the huge booms and busts that people have in the economy. And if you look at the root cause of that, my personal opinion is that it's because of uh, payment terms. So for example, if I do work for you, you know, and then you, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it? I do work for you and then, you know, there's an invoice, but it's not due for 30 days, right? Now your business may be structurally sound, but the truth is your cash flow is all over the place. With blockchain technology, we can actually do real-time payments, right? You could be paid minute by minute, hour by hour, real-time, program, yeah. contract. So we're going to create very flat, even money flows through the entire economy globally, and we're going to just completely remove these booms and busts that are really nothing more than just cash flow issues that are compounded and yeah. compounded at a global level. I mean, I lived through the dot-com bubble. I was actually part of it um, on the front end, on the euphoria side, as well as on the crash, part of the whole search paradigm, Google right there, keywords, all that stuff happening, growth, massive growth. So, so I saw that the, the, the scammers in there or the, the, bubble, bubble, the bubble people, we, saw, we called them, but the reality is everything happened. Exactly. There was pet foods online. You could get shopping delivered to your house. Exactly. So again, to your point, it's a little euphoric right now, but what's different is, is you have now community data. See, what I, what I see happening is it's not a major bubble crash because self-government, self-governing, self-governance yeah. is a community dynamic. That's right. So I think there's going to be a lot of self-healing inside the networks themselves. You're already seeing it here. You sure. know, I mean, a lot of people, bad actors being identified. Investors flight to quality, looking at quality deals. Interesting yeah, I mean, times, your thoughts. Well, I mean, you know, we've, we've been through many evolutions of society. We've had, you know, uh, serfdom, we've had monarchies, we've had representative democracies, we have all these things. And I mean, I just think the next evolution is, is decentralized governance, right? And, you know, we don't even know what that means yet because it's just starting. But, you know, I think we can all, if we close our eyes and really think about it, 
I think it's pretty obvious what the issues are with our current system, and not just yeah. the U.S., but, but globally. And uh, I think we have an opportunity here to build in kind of organic program governance. And what's really special about blockchain technology is if I program it to do X, it's going to do X. So we don't need to, I don't need to know who you are to trust you, right? I don't need to worry about where we're going to sue each other or we're going to have arbitration if things go wrong. We're just going to make an agreement and we're going to yeah. program it that way and that's it, yeah, right? And now, and now the next phase is I could build on top of that trusting that that's just going to happen. So you can yeah. create these chains of trust and that can happen anywhere in the world. So I think this is a Sounds whole like a bunch thing. of web services. <laughs> well, it, in oh. many ways, the a, in, in terms of the architecture, yeah. you could yeah. absolutely uh, uh, think of the it The reusability, like the leverage is, is right. amazing. That's All right, right. So I want to just end the segment, Marshall. Take a minute to end the segment to talk about what you're working on. Ninja Coin, Ninja, N-Y-N-J-A dot biz. That's right. You guys have a product. You've got a uh, blockchain-enabled platform. Correct. you got a coin. Take a minute to explain what you're working on. Basically, we want to provide the tools and services to help people live in this new reality. So in order to uh, basically function in the world that we're entering into, we're going to need tools that far surpass what's currently available in terms of the messengers, the websites, all these things. We need to be operating at a level that takes communication completely frictionless, payment completely frictionless, and governance completely frictionless. And we have to put this all together. And that's what we're doing with Ninja. We're starting with a global communicator, which is basically, uh, you know, if you want to take WeChat, Telegram, whatever, but we have about 50 additional features that really take communications to the next level. And then on top of it, creating the baseline with cryptocurrency payment and also smart contract wizards and helping people kind of you know, get these teams going and get paid and, and organize their financial life in a decentralized way. So we're just basically going to be the next generation of these messenger type platforms with blockchain integrated. And what you're going to see is that over the next couple of years, you're going to get to the first companies that are achieving not just a billion or two billion or three billion users, but paying users. And we're going to be one of the probably three to five platforms that are offering tools at the global level like this. And have you done an ICO already or not? We're just started our, uh, we've just started our private ICO about two weeks ago. Um, we're getting tremendous support in Asia. Uh, quite frankly, uh, the U.S. is uh, not seeing it as much. Is it a utility token or security? A utility token. Yep. And uh, I think it's really uh, telling interesting. Coming here, it's the first time I've been doing the presenting. We spoke yesterday at the D10E, and uh, we also spoke at D10E in Korea a week or two ago, and the and the response is is, is incredible. Yeah. And I think the reason is because... The Asian market gets it. Well, they're already they living in this world within their own confines in terms of the messenger with their payment and governance built in. Yep. Um, so when I tell them that you know we're going to do this globally with crypto, immediately they get it. I'm having trouble here, um, especially in these five minute pitches, which is ridiculous. Yeah, it's, uh, it's so nuanced. It's, it's like a chop shop, you know, yeah. and, uh, and, and it's just, I don't know how to, I don't know how to communicate the idea uh, within this uh, short time frame. So, you know, what I'm looking for while we're here this week is just to find people who really want to take an hour or two, or even people like yourself who want to do interviews and just kind of, yeah. you know, really talk to people and really well, explain platform, what we're doing. Platform yeah. is complex, a lot, of, a lot of pieces to it. It's a system, but the value you offer is essentially offering developers who are building products. That's right for tools that you've built so they can scale faster. Correct. That sounds like your value proposition. That's right, and although I can't say specifically, uh, we're also working on a deal that's going to get us started with about 15 million active users uh, on day one. So that's very exciting right. and we're really, and the really excited about that. And coins to be utility that measures what? Sorry? Well, your, your utility coin is going to be measuring what? What's the main token economics that drives the, for uh, the ICO economics? Yeah, for your for uh, the, Ninja coin. Yeah, so basically we're releasing five billion tokens. 45% uh, of them will be sold. Um, there's a, a five cents a token, so the hard cap uh, by definition is about 112 million. And uh, we've, uh, actually we're planning to do the, the public sale in April, um, but uh, we may uh, cancel it uh, or postpone it just because the private sale is going really well. Um, but we'll see how that goes. Yeah. But in terms of once it's live, uh, this will basically be the utility token of the entire ecosystem. So anybody, not just within our Ninja app or platform, but even people, I don't know if you know, XMPP Federation, like yeah. back in the day. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, if, you could, regional if, if, you, if you could think of us yeah. as the next version of XMPP Federation, but using cryptocurrency in order to avoid bad actors by making it very expensive to do bad things and yeah. very cheap to do good things. 
and globally. So it's like, it's like Twitter, you can create a bot instantly, but if there's coins involved, you'd have to spend to get it. That's right, so and also you, people could yeah. spin up nodes that are basically their own Twitters, yep. and decide if those yeah. Twitters of their own, their ninja uh, yeah. boxes of their own, are either just internally, or you could specify specifically contacts, or group yeah. of contacts, or other That's nodes. That's a great way to get bad actors out, because it costs them money. That's right. If and email and it's came decentralized, out today, there's no single spot. That's right, if email <laughs> came out today, when cryptocurrency existed, there would be no spam, because it would be expensive as hell to send more than a few a second, but it would still be free for for everybody generally, and you wouldn't even have spam. So we think we could do that for messaging globally. Yeah. Great. Marshall, thanks so much for coming on. We really appreciate it. Check out Ninja. Mar Marshall Taplitz is the Chief Strategy Officer and co-founder of Ninja.biz. Uh, check them out online. Check out their websites in, in Asia. Bring in that culture of mobile, and fast moving, real time apps to the rest of the developers. It's theCUBE, coverage in Puerto Rico for Blockchain Unbound, exclusive two days of coverage. We'll be right back with more after this short break. Thanks for watching.